Hi everybody. <laughs> it's um it's been a morning. Um like my internet wasn't working and so I'm not even sure if like this whole stream is actually going to make it. I'm recording it, but I live in like a very um unstable internet region. Like I live in the country and so the internet goes off on me a lot. Um <laughs> So I might be thinking about getting something to kind of improve that because it, it is it does complicate things, but particularly for like schoolwork and such, because I really need the internet for that because I'm taking online classes and I I live like about 30 minutes from like a, a city. Like the rest are just like small towns in between, so starting a little late but i'm really surprised i'm starting at all because i was like just trying to be productive on my phone like going through like little projects and then i turn and look at my computer and it's 11 59 and my internet is back up and i'm just like <laughs> i just like but i'm starting to learn i'm starting to learn like make sure that i'm productive and at any time it can come off at any time it can go off so <laughs> enough of that we'll try to be productive um with the voice that i have i today i just wanted to talk about kind of like what i was talking about last stream because I, I realized i missed some things that i really wanted to add so i'm going to add those now so last stream i talked about um my test results, like that I, my like health test results that I took when I was in Florida, I got tested for a bunch of things like, uh, like my nutrient levels. Um, I got tested for Lyme, certain bacterias, mycotoxins, um, all these like different things. And, um, I kind of discussed those test results. You can see them on my YouTube if you want to go back and look. Um, I was pretty transparent about them as much as I could. Uh, and yeah, so I do have Lyme and I do have a lot of bacteria and mycotoxins in my body. So um, so what I wanted to talk about today was like when I went and I got tested, like they gave me this kind of layout, this protocol of what they thought I needed most so that I could get rid of all the stuff that I have that's bad and then kind of repair all the damage that all the bad stuff did. So, I mean, there's like a lot of layers to it. Um, in my last stream, I also talked about my last, last stream, yeah? I talked about uh, a, a healing Lyme book and um, that talked about the protocols that one can go through uh, in a natural, like, direction if you wanted to do that yourself. And um, so I'm kind of, in the future, see what I'm, planning on doing is taking the protocol from this holistic center that I went to in Florida and then kind of mixing it with the protocol from this book. Um, so I'm kind of collecting all the stuff for that right now and I'm still waiting for the Lyme protocol from the holistic center. I'm having trouble with it getting to my P.O. box. Um, another thing about country living, uh, which I don't mind, I like, I just like learning how to like work around it is something that I need to do. So, with that said, um, I'm going to go over some of the things that they wanted me to do. I have a couple more, like, uh, things that are still coming in the mail. So, um, actually, I should probably grab the piece of paper that talks about it. Okay, one sec, I'm going to grab my binder. forgot how useful this would probably be to have. Okay, so they gave me a binder and told me of all these things that I should be, I should have. So having this in front of me actually might help. Um, they like, so, so with everything that I have, they kind of just gave me what they thought would be the best. And 
Something that I learned from the book Healing Lyme, which I totally believe in, I totally agree with the herbalist who wrote the book. He was, he's a very advanced herbalist. He knows, a, he knows a lot about chemistry, cellular biology. He's, he's very, he's very educated and I really, he's, he's no longer with us, but the book is really good. And what I learned from it was that you have to listen to your body because everybody's body is different. The like dosages on different medicines and such, they're just generalized and like just general generalize that's it so like someone who's smaller someone who's bigger someone who has a, a more uh i don't know stronger metabolism faster metabolism like there's different variations depending on your body so like you know the dosages they give us on supplements and on medicine like that's just general and all we can do is just kind of listen to our bodies and i hope we get it right and just over time be more intuitive of what our body needs because um, everybody's different so that's what i learned from the book and i'm definitely going to apply it um because uh i have some loved ones who are also going through this holistic program and they made some mistakes that i'm going to learn from and those mistakes are they kind of took all the supplements at once and they got sick um, instead of like going at it really slow and like one at a time, making sure that the body is compatible for it. Um, so during this, like this program that they said I should take, so some of these things that they said I should take, so I'm going to go over them. So because of like, you'll have to look at my, my past stream if you want to like look at all the little things that like I talked about that I needed, but this is just what they suggested. So I have all these, all these little products I'm about to show you, I have them because my mother um, was on the program, but then she kind of quit. She didn't want to do it anymore. She wanted to take the easy road out in a different way. She, she couldn't handle the responsibility and it is a lot of responsibility. It is a lot of listening to your body, being intuitive, and um, it's a lot of work for somebody who just would rather pay somebody to just clean up the mess that you made. And that's kind of like the mentality that I think a lot of Americans have, and especially my mother, who who has worked really hard to get a lot of money in her life, and she has the money to like put towards her health, but instead, literally I, I shit you not instead she chooses to just take the free the freebies so instead of like doing all this like work and going through this program that could potentially clean her system out and everything and like a lot of other things and i, I don't really want to get into my mother at this point but um she chose the easy way out she chose a free option and it's really it's really hard to like i don't know I don't I don't agree with that like um, I think everyone needs to take responsibility for their health and nobody not everyone has to be a nutritionist not everyone has to be a doctor but we all should take responsibility for our health so this is me doing that and so I, I inherited a bunch of her supplements from that program um, which were also some supplements that they suggested now maybe this isn't the right way maybe it is but i'm going to give it a shot because i've got a bunch of bacteria and mycotoxins and lime in me and the minimum for getting lime out of the body is like 12 months six to what is it eight to 12 months i think according to the book that i read so it's it's t it's going to take a while so um and during that time it's so important to put a lot of pressure on um, the lime and give your body the, that fighting chance, that advantage. So, here's some of the supplements. I'm not like, I'm just gonna show it to you. Like, I'm not trying to like tell you to go buy this stuff. Like, please don't. Um, this is just what I got. So this is like what I'm going to try and and everything. I think it's really weird how they give me so many aminos. So here's perfect amino. Um, there it is. It looks like I'll have to take, I mean like I, it says one serving is one scoop. What is this? 
Oh, heck no, I'm not taking this. Hold on. Wait. Okay, <laughs> I was really confused at first. I thought I thought this wasn't vegan because it was talking about... It, it was just, it was like giving you, um, like, the, like, how many grams of this. Anyways, never mind. So anyways, I'm supposed to take, like, one scoop of this. There is 30 in this container. I could potentially, like, do these aminos and these aminos. So there's, there's one. This would last me a month if I did it every day. Then here's another one that's also aminos. So, like, f there's these aminos and these aminos. So I don't know. Here's another one. And this would also last a month. So... I guess, like, I, I don't see the reason for doing them together. That would just seem like overkill. Because it's the same thing. It's the essential amino acids. Um, so, leave that there. And, like, this is for... This was, like, also given to my mother, who is a cancer patient, and she ate meat. Just, just to, like, let you know. <laughs> Maybe that would, like, help some people, like, mentally project think about things. Anyways, here's another one. This one's called SBI Protect. It's a powder, I think, for the stomach. For the digestive tract. Anyways, here it is. So, there's about two months worth in here. So, maybe all of these are just for two months. But this right here, here's um, uh, Omega-3. Here's that. All of these, if I looked them, uh, if I looked at them correctly, are all vegan. Anyways, except for this one, I think it says gelatin, so I'll put that. Away. There's this one. This one is the multivitamin. So. And I think multivitamins are really dumb um, for people who have, like, kind of studied nutrition for a minute. Like, they put things that counteract each other. Like, what, was it vitamin C and B12, like, counteract? Like, or is it C and something else? Either, like, there are certain vitamins that, like, cancel each other out. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So multivitamins are kind of just, like, they don't make sense. Um, but here's one anyways, and this one is vegan, so I'll probably take this, so. Um, and then a gut support, because we love our gut. Because the gut is, I believe, the seat of immune system, so they say. How long, how, how many, like, months is this? One teaspoon, 47, so about a little more than a month for that gut support. Okay. Um, that's all that I have, like, that was suggested that I have right now from my mother. And then I have, like, a couple other things coming. Something called Bactrex that's supposed to, like, kind of fight the bacteria. And then I have glutathione, uh, like, drops because they say to, like, go and get, like, IV bags. But I don't really have the time, energy, and commitment to, like, drive into the nearest town to go get IV bags. So I'm not going to do that. They also suggest, like, the Myers cocktail and chemotherapy, all the all of those like big things I'm not going to do. So I'm skipping those ones. Um wait, I wrote them on the back. They suggested pyrole support, which was for mood, the neurological system. Do 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 the Backtracks. Okay, I think I think like that was it, save for whatever I'm getting from um, that I I bought online. The backtracks and the glutathione and let me double check because I want to be like as thorough as I can be because I could always look back at this and see what I did. 
Oh yeah, the GI detox. To cleanse, um, to cleanse the stomach. So more stomach cleansing stuff, which is important. We need to keep our, our gut really healthy. So I also have these and some charcoal. Although it's coming with the GI detox, but I also, I don't know how long. That'll probably only last for like a month or two. And But I do have activated charcoal, and I'm going to use that to clean my stomach out and absorb all the garbage. So I'll have a protocol due for that. I also have an enema bag, and I'd like to kind of do that at the beginning so that I can kind of flush everything out so that things can absorb. Because over time, like, things just cake into our body and, like, prevent absorption of nutrients. And I learned that from... Um, somewhere in my somewhere in my studies about raw veganism and and how it's important to just like clean everything out before you transition into raw veganism because otherwise like all the cake and junk and toxins from living a life of eating like cooked foods and processed foods and stuff just like create layers of garbage that make it difficult for the body to absorb the nutrients so um that's a fun that's a fun topic to look up because then you get into um getting rid of like the sludge that's in your stomach and it's amazingly disgusting what you can find in your body and what your body is carrying around right now okay um so that was that and now so i told you like what I have from, for the protocol, pretty much from, like, the holistic center that I went to. So I'll put that away. And so the Lyme book, which I don't have anymore because I gave it back to my landlord, I wrote down the protocol and everything, which I talked about in a previous stream, but I wrote down from that, um, oh wait, no, this was, okay, this was, these are notes that I took um, after looking at all of my tests. That's what this is. So after looking uh, at all of my tests, I wrote down all the things that I needed more of. And I went through and I looked at like where I could get it in nature. Like the food that I can be eating more of so that I can get more of this in my body. So... Vitamin A, I have carrots, spinach, and cantaloupe, and I don't like, I don't like melons for some reason, but it's there. It's listed, but I would prefer, like, carrots, spinach. So this, this isn't a complete list, this is just, like, me doodling, like, probably looking at things that I'm more likely going to eat. So, um, vitamin E, hazelnuts, acai, and pine nuts. I love pine nuts, but they're super expensive. Eh. Omega-3, which if I'm taking, I'm not, I'm not going to take the omega-3 because that has gelatin in it, gross. Um, so for omega-3, I have hemp seeds, flax seeds, walnuts, chia seeds, cooked spinach. I don't really want to eat cooked food, but there's seaweed, mangoes, berries. So there's an extensive list for omega-3. Um, I had to, I had to cut out peanuts and peanut butter because apparently, like, the ratio from, like, omega-6 and omega-3 is really unbalanced and, um, made, like, levels, made my, like, omega-6 levels, like, really high and I just wasn't getting enough omega-3 to compensate for that and, yeah, I guess, like, that creates problems. I think inflammation and I don't know what else, so. Um, more B12. Um, so I can take a B12 supplement, which I have, um, but there's also flax meat, and they have, like, the fortified plant milks as well. Um, potassium. That was something that I had low levels of, so raisins, dried apricots, orange juice, dates. I love dates. I eat a lot of dates, so I'm just, like, kind of weirded out how... I had such low potassium levels because I eat so many dates and avocado. So, um, but apparently raisins are really dried, dried grapes apparently have a lot of potassium for some reason. So, cool, we still have the internet, that's awesome. <laughs> um, vitamin D, which we all get from the sun. I need to get outside more. <laughs> so, um, and then I also have a, a D supplement for the winter because... 
I live on the West Coast, I live in Oregon, it gets really overcast here a lot. And um, if I'm not gonna go outside, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna have to get my vitamin D supplement. <laughs> um, antioxidants, I need to make sure I'm getting my berries, blackberries, blueberries, they're super expensive right now. Gotta grow my own, which reminds me, I do have to purchase some blackberry starts. I'm sorry, blueberry. Um, low bush variety. I want to make a note of that. Low bush. Okay, I'll remember to look at that. Okay, so collagen. There's actually, let's see, proteins. We make collagen in our body um, if we're given the right proteins. Like, there's no reason to go for collagen supplements. It doesn't make any sense, especially when they're animal-based because they're just, like, like, I don't know, I think they're using, like, bones and stuff. It just doesn't make sense. Like, we can make our own collagen. We just need to give our body what it needs. So there's certain proteins for that. And um, I didn't write those ones down, but you can go Google them, look at them up. Look at the, the proteins that you need for your body to form collagen and just make sure that you're getting that if you're worried about your collagen levels. Um, cause that's what I learned anyways from my research and, uh, for some reason my iodine was down, my, sorry, my iodine was down and that's in seaweed. And then I've got lot, I've got lots of seaweed now. Like, remember like these tests that I took, I took them during a time where I was cutting out a lot of things and I was not making sure that I had all the nutrients that I needed. So like, that's definitely going to change test results. Uh, effect impact test results so also zinc we got shiitake spinach hearts of palm which i like but they always come in cans that's gross um avocado blackberries raspberries and then my copper needed to be increased we have durian which i've had trouble finding um but durian is one of the top for copper we also have avocado guava blackberries kiwi so you're gonna hear like repeats of things shiitake hearts of palm so like you know nature has a lot of our nutrients they are our like our multivitamins nature like fruits and vegetables they are our our fruits and vegetables are our multivitamins <laughs> you know but they but they're more perfect than the supplements that you'll find in the stores and they're more like um they're more balanced. You're not going to find things that like likely cancel themselves out. Like supplements that have vitamins that just deactivate themselves. It doesn't make sense. Okay. I made a list of the proteins, but I didn't complete complete it for like the food sources, but <laughs> I only did the one for lysine because that was the one that I was like, I had such low levels of. Um, and like the strongest ones are tempeh, tofu, sprouted lentils, and pumpkin seeds. And now I have like those like in my, in my cabinets and, and such. Um, although I'm trying to get away from things that I have to cook, but I really want to make sure that I get my nutrients first until I'm more familiar with everything, so, um, anyways, that's the one, that's the only one that I, that I had, I had, like, completed. Drink water. Um, so, like, I also have, like, sacral chakra issues that I've always kind of, like, had trouble with, so I made a list of, um, like, yoni promoting and anti-aging stuff anything that has to do with like the sacral chakra so like hair skin like health like yoni energy so i like had a whole list of it and it's actually some of it i already have so ginkgo ginseng damiana maca gotu cola i have all of those Except for Damiana, I think I ran out of that. It's really good as a tea. I think it's also a Nervine. Helps you like relax the nervous system. Um, ashwagandha, I do have that. I'm gonna need some more powder. Um, things that I don't have. 
Angelica or Don Kwa, Kwai tea, which you have to be careful with if you want to get pregnant. I don't, so I'm happy to ingest it all day long. Um, Ashoka, which I don't have, um, and aloe vera drinks are also, and Shatavari. Shatavari, Guduchi, um, sandalwood tea, and um, Laki. So those are the things that I don't have that I could potentially look into getting. Um, a lot of these are adaptogens, excuse me, and I want to talk about adaptogens for a second because, like, I've had a lot of, like, energy issues the past several years, brain fog, especially brain fog. Brain fog has been so annoying to me and it just makes me feel really slow and sluggish and lately I haven't been getting it at all. I've been taking, since, particularly since I've been, well when I was raw vegan I didn't have a problem with it and um, when I have been taking adaptogens. So the adaptogens, I definitely suggest people get into adaptogens because I can tell that they're really improving my quality of life. Um, adaptogens are like herbs, roots, um, medicinal plants that um, affect more than one system in a positive way, a, a, a system in your body. So like the nervous system, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, the reproductive system. So they enhance those this, those systems, they, um, they help them adapt to stress, um, which is very beneficial for your body. So, um, like ginkgo, ginkgo and goto cola, they're really good for the brain. Um, ashwagandha is really good for the nervous system, and I think the reproductive system as well. So, like, adaptogens affect more than one system or two systems one or two systems. So they affect multiple systems and so they're very beneficial for the body. So I don't know what else to say about that, but I want I want <laughs> I want you guys to like know that adaptogens are amazing. They they can promote anti-aging and um just powerful immune strength like it's great like adaptogens are amazing they are the medicine we should be consuming um especially in this world full of toxins and stress i feel very like much more confident in my health when i take adaptogens so i i've so like lately the past several weeks possibly the last month i've been taking adaptogens every day Maybe not the same ones. I like switch them around um, But I've been taking adaptogens every day. It feels great. I don't have brain fog anymore <laughs> Which feels great and I have energy and um, Yeah Let's see maca Tulsi is also a good one chaga, which is really awesome But sometimes in short supply and also not always sustainable takes it takes many years to for chaga to grow it's a it's a mushroom that grows on trees and um it takes a really long time to grow and uh yeah i'm not sure how how sustainable that is but there's also centella asiatica oh wait that's go to cola um and then siberian ginseng that was one of the um I need to get that one because that's one of the uh, big herbs that the book talked about for healing Lyme. So I definitely, that's on my list of things to order as well. And then licorice, and I hate licorice for some reason. Um, turmeric is also an adaptogen. I put it in my uh, everything. <laughs> I love turmeric. It definitely, I've actually, before I understood adaptogens, like I used turmeric a lot for, um, I used to actually have, I wouldn't say arthritis, but maybe it was an onset of arthritis because, like, I had trouble, like, moving my fingers a lot. Like, they were, like, kind of, like, stuck and, like, kind of hurt to, like, use them and, for a while, like, in my joints. And I took, like, turmeric and I didn't have that problem anymore. And I had, like, like, my knees would click and, like, I'd have... A lot of things would click like my body would just like make an orchestra of noises and like like all my joints and when I 
been taking turmeric, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, and then the brain fog also, because turmeric also affects the circulatory system. Um, which also had to do with, like, the cold hands and feet that I was experiencing, so. Because I have circulatory issues, like my hands and feet get cold, joints, brain fog, all that has can be cleared up by turmeric, at least for me and my body, for whatever issues, um, for whatever origin of that. Okay. So, that's that, anyways. Okay. So again, my immune system is taxed from bacteria, mycotoxins, which are like molds, uh, Lyme disease, and yeah, the lack of antioxidants that I had was making me age faster. And like I said, like, for f the 14 years that I was vegan, I didn't eat a lot of fruit. People should be eating fruit. It's definitely not good to not eat fruit. You need to eat fruit. Fruit is detoxifying. It is energizing. It gives you, your body, the um, nutrients it needs, etc. Okay. So I talked about my plan for the future, for the holistic protocol. I'm still waiting for some things. And, and then, like, I have to get some more herbs from the protocol that the book was talking about. And I talked about the adaptogens. Adaptogens are amazing. I definitely incorporate some adaptogens into your life. Like look up the benefits for yourself and see which ones would do best for your body. Totally worth it. Like you will totally notice a difference in your life if you adopt an adaptogen that works for your body. Okay, so. I'm going to talk about eating and drinking habits. So I've done so much like research and I learned so much. So I want to share what I've learned. And these are the things that I've learned and have started to incorporating into my life. Um, these are eating and drinking habits. And these are things I think everyone should know because there is science behind it. And when you like the things that you eat and drink and the way that you do it, like it does affect your body and um, its ability to help you. Okay, so... The first one is, don't eat until you're full. Listen for the burp. Okay, so um, if you eat patiently, your body will let you know when it's full um, and tell you to stop with this little burp. And I didn't really notice it until I like was raw, and then I like I felt I, I felt that that little sign like. Um, However, it's only useful when you're eating the right foods. Like if you're eating like carbonated drinks or processed foods and stuff, this will obviously interfere with that sign that your body is trying to give you. And uh, so if I eat fast, if I like eat while I'm moving around and stuff, because sometimes I sit down and I'm like, oh wait, I want to get this and then I want to do this and grab this and that can interfere with that, that sign. So don't eat. Um, until don't eat until you're full make sure to listen for the burp so just um, the burp will tell you when it when your body has enough in the stomach so no more so it's telling you okay that's enough don't don't put any more in me kind of thing so um, and that's part of being intuitive with your body like listening when you've had enough um, and you might think like whoa that wasn't a lot at all well you maybe your body doesn't need that much Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you've just, like, we've, we're in this society um, where we think that more is better. But more can just, like, prevent, like, can just, like, creates, like, this lagging effect. And the opposite effect of what we want. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so. The next thing that I learned was that certain foods go together and certain foods don't. It's important that we learn which ones do and which ones don't. The purpose of eating is to benefit the body. Eating certain foods or having certain eating habits that create stress for the body ultimately creates stress for you. So an example is that I learned is that don't eat cucumbers and tomatoes together. Um, and this is because there's something in the, t in the cucumber that inhibits the absorption of the vitamin C in tomatoes. Um, so that's just one example, but there are a lot of foods like this. 
that we should consider when we eat food. <laughs> so another example is don't, um, don't eat and drink within the same hour of consumption. So there are different enzymes that are needed for certain foods and also foods and liquids. So the best way I can describe it is that um, it makes it harder for your body um, to kind of digest multiple things. So the more variety that you actually put in your body in one sitting, the more... Uh, kind of stress that has for your body because your body has to now like like bring in all these different enzymes and it's working hard to try to get all these different things which are digesting at different rates so some things are in the body longer than they should be and they're getting in the way and blah 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 things are maybe even mixing together that are canceling each other out it's just creating so much unnecessary stress and disturbance in the body um so don't eat or drink at the same time. Do one or the other. Um, and there's a lot of revelations that come with this. When you start thinking about it, like don't do it just yet. Like think about it and think about like how often you eat and drink throughout your day and then feel how it feels when you eat and drink at the same time. And then um, pick a day where you're only eating or drinking during the day, one at a time. So, and then feel what that feels like and see how, like, more easily, like, things kind of process. Um, with that said, um, like, things, oh, I lost my thought, hold on, uh, oh, uh, yes, so, um, I learned that, I kind of mentioned this already, but when you have, like, too much of different things in your body, you have, like, too much variety in one meal, it's, it's not, it, it just creates, like, a lot of stress for the body, because they have to, like, send in all these different enzymes, things, um, things, uh, as I said, they digest at different rates, they may interact with each other negatively, or not, not in a beneficial way for you, so, um, the strategy that especially raw vegans have is that you have mono meals and that creates the least amount of stress because they only their body only needs like this enzyme or this enzyme so it's super easy and then all of that content that you consume gets digested all at once easy peasy lemon squeezy um of course, not a lot of people are going to want to do mono meals. Um, I've definitely incorporated them into my life. Not Maybe not every day, but I'm slowly getting into it um, because it's, it's the best. <laughs> it's the best. It feels so good. Um, maybe not for somebody who's already loaded with toxins um, because maybe that will stimulate a purge or something. So, um, But just a little bit at a time really does help um, and gives your body like... The break it needs from all the garbage you put in it so excuse me i haven't eaten today but i'm drinking a lot of water let me get some more that's another insight that i've i've gotten like you don't have to eat a lot especially when you're drinking um I guess maybe I just have enough in my body. I don't know, like, that's the, that's what's awesome about when you fast. If you're just drinking when you're fasting, like, you don't really feel that hunger that much. Like, your body just needs that water to help process what it already has in it and flush out all the toxins. Okay. Another thing that I learned for helpful eating habits is don't engage with stressful activities when you eat. I mean, that should already be, like, obvious, but a lot of people don't maybe don't think about it because of habits over, you know, their entire life. Um, but this can mean, like, watching a horror movie that makes you nervous and it and stimulates all these, like, chemicals that make you feel scared and unsafe. Um, or it can also be, like, you moving around. Like, I have that problem sometimes. I try to just, when I sit down to eat, I try not to get up. Um, I try to make sure I plan everything so I have everything that I need. And I am also, um, I also like to sometimes listen to, like, calming music when I eat. 
or you know watching somebody play a really chill game um just something that like makes me like relaxed because um that's what you want to do when you eat um feel good and relaxed and chill and not stressed or rushed um because then the body will think that there's something wrong and stress hormones will be released and uh and such and such um so standing while eating is also not helpful. I had a friend that, that did this all the time and I, I cared a little bit too much and like I got like really passionate about it. I'm just like, you should sit when you eat because she was such a stressed out person and I just wanted her to like relax because she deserved to relax. Um, but standing while eating is not helpful because it puts the stomach in an unnatural position for a digestion so it can cause indigestion. So what we want to do with our lives is create as le the least amount of stress as possible for ourselves and our body. That's the name of the game. Okay, another helpful eating habit is um, don't eat before you go to bed. A lot of people don't like like going to bed on an empty stomach, but um, as like I kind of mentioned in... I think the last video, um, like, your body's trying to, like, heal you when you sleep. It heals the best when you're, when you're, when you put food in your body, you're like, um, your body is going to put all of that energy into digestion. So, what, when it could be helping you detox from things. So, um, and usually when people go to sleep, that's like, one of the best opportunities for the body to help cleanse you and clean you and so you don't want to eat um while you know before you go to bed because um always so always sleep on an empty stomach your body needs all the chances it can get to clean and repair your body at night while you sleep so don't give it more work to do food gives you energy and can interfere with a good night's sleep waking you up in the and breaking your sleep cycle so i mean that should be pretty obvious for people people do it though because you know we have crazy lives and everything but we just we got to do our best for our bodies for ourselves to make ourselves feel better and improve our quality of life because we all deserve it everyone deserves to have a stress-free life and really no one's going to do it for you so um just pick a habit and change it you know over time that habit's going to solidify and you'll have a healthy habit so it's totally worth it a little goes a long way okay so um i'm so glad we still have internet sweet um so the last habit that i have is um generally make your meals the least complicated as possible oh wait I, I think i pretty much talked about it so the the more different types of food that you eat the more enzymes and different digestion times you get it creates more challenges for the body um mono meals are where it's at adopt a mono meal a day i like to do it in the morning like eat a bunch of apples or a bunch of grapes and that's like your first meal and wait for that wait for that burp wait for that burp that tells you no more no more food you're good um, dun dun dun. I like, I, I like eating plums too. Plums and grapes and apples are like my favorite kinds of mono meals. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so just pick a healthy habit and you'll get better. It'll get better for sure. <laughs> Hurrah! Cool. I'm so happy that I managed to do this and it doesn't look like it doesn't look like anything went terribly wrong the beginning of the stream it, well i didn't have internet and i wasn't sure when i was going to get back but um it it worked out it worked out pretty well and i do have homework that i have to do so i'm really glad that i ended up this ended up working and i'm ending at an opportune time <laughs> so that i can have time to do my homework so this is perfect um I'm so glad I got all of this out of the way, talking about, like, the, the supplements and the protocol that I'm going to do. Next stream, I'm going to talk about a class that I'm taking, my weed management class. Um, I have a bunch of things that I want to talk about with that, insights and things that I've learned from 
other things. I mean, like, it, school is not my only resource. I definitely do a lot of reading on my own time. Um, so if you want to if you want to be there for that, and my internet ends up working favorably, um, I believe I'm going to be doing that on Wednesday. Yes. Next week, I'm going to a festival, so I'm going to be gone for um, a week, pretty much, starting probably the 12th. I'm going to be, like, driving all the way down to, like, the LA area, so I won't be here for that, um, for any, like, you know, after that. So we're going to, I'm trying to get down, like, a bunch of streams because I have so much, so many things I want to talk about, especially with school. So I'm going to count this as a productive screen, stream and I'm going to export it to YouTube for anyone who wants to watch the whole thing. And I will be gaming, not tomorrow. I might change my mind, though, because I really want to play ESO. Um, I think I'm going to be gaming on Monday is the scheduled time that I picked. So if you want to watch that, I'll be here on Twitch for that. And thank you so much for joining me, and I hope that you learned something. Please share what you've learned, and because um, everyone deserves an improved quality of life. So treat yourself well, live long, and prosper.